Hey, what is up, guys? My name is Eric, and in today's episode, I'm going to be teaching you about recursion, or also known as creating a recursive function in C++. Let's do this. So what is recursion anyways? Recursion is the concept of having a function call itself. So for instance, if we were to create a void function, for example, void hello, and then inside the hello function, we would see out hello world. And then if we were to call that function inside our main function, compile and run this program, it would display hello world. However, this is not recursion. In order to make the function hello a recursive function, we have to make it call itself. So in order to do that, underneath the C outline, we would type in hello again. So what happens here is when the program runs, it would run the main function and it runs the hello function through this statement right here. So once it goes to the hello function, it C outs hello world. Once it C outs hello world, it would call itself again which makes it go back up here and then see out hello world. And then basically it'll go on in an infinite endless cycle until your computer runs out of memory, which crashes the program. Now, in order to make recursive functions truly useful, you have to define a stopping point. So in order to do that, let's use an example that involves math. Now in math, there is something called a factorial. Now this example is widely used whenever discussing the recursive function topic. In case you don't remember how to do factorials in math or probably haven't learned them, so basically, in order to find the factorial of a value, it's basically like this. So in, for instance, if you were asked to simplify or find a value for 5 factorial, factorial is represented by the exclamation mark after the number that you are trying to find a factorial of. It basically means 5 factorial equals 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and then equals and then you do the math and by doing the math you get 120. So if we were to do 3 factorial then you would do 3 times 2 times 1 which equals to 6. However in the case of 0 factorial it equals 1. That's just a special scenario. And then when it's 1 factorial well it's simply 1. Okay, so keeping this in mind, let's create a factorial function. So for this entire program, for the entire lesson, we're going to focus on creating a factorial calculator. So I'm just going to leave these four lines here and comment them out, just for your reference. So to create a factorial function, let's create int factorial and then curly brackets. Now remember, this is going to be a recursive function. Inside the parameters of your factorial function, we're going to have it accept an integer of num. Or if we want to make it math friendly, let's call it int x. So inside our main function, let's see out factorial, and then let's say 5 factorial, end line. That way, when the main function calls the factorial function, it would see out the return value from our integer data type factorial function. Okay, so in order to create a factorial function calculator, we're going to have to somehow create a formula that will allow us to decrement the values every time the factorial calls itself and returns a value so it can multiply by the previous value. So to do this, we're going to take advantage of the if else statement that we've learned a while back. So if else and then else do this. Okay, so what are we going to put in the parentheses? Well, we're going to check for a one case. So if x is not equal to one, then I want you to return the value of x times the factorial of x minus one. So this is what will allow us to do the multiplication with the incoming number times it by the decremented value. And then otherwise, if the x value is 1, we want it to stop. So in that case, we'll return the value of 1. Because if we don't do this return value of 1, it'll keep decrementing all the way down to 0. And that will just make our entire answer 0, which is incorrect. Okay, so if we were to compile and run this program just to test it out, we should see 120 as a result. And as you can see in the console window, the answer is 120. Perfect. Okay, so if we were to change this value from a 5, to let's say 20, 
we could solve the value of 20 factorial. So if we were to compile and run this program, let's see what we would get. We would get a negative value, which is incorrect. The reason why this is happening is because of the integer data type. The integer data type can only store so much values before it hits a certain limit in your computer's memory. So in that case, 20 is way too big of a number. However, one way to solve the issue is to change the int to a double. So let's say double, and then if we were to compile and run this program again, we should see the result. And as you can see, it shows 2.4329 e times 10 to the 18 or something, whatever it represents, which is correct because anything that is a factorial should result in a positive value. If you get a negative value or a zero, then you probably did something wrong in your code or it, the computer's memory ran out of space for that data type. In that case, you would want to create something like a double or perhaps a long data type so it could store more values. With that in mind, thank you for watching today's tutorial on how to create recursive functions in C++. And if you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below as usual. And I'll see you next time.